a member of the Do It For Real team and this is our uh, project report uh, with video version um, of our project about the consent campaign with our client Susan Vink. Um, so th this project that we have has consent as a theme and topic and goal and more specifically uh, our goal was to raise awareness about consent among students of wind design. Um, so what we did was firstly try to understand what was consent for the clients, for us, and then when we talked about it, we realized that something very important was really uh, common among all of us, was that consent for us is the non-violation of our boundaries. And when we we actually realized that consent is not just about heavy sexual or more harassment. It's also about our day-to-day -day experiences where when we say no, it's not accepted and people keep insisting and insisting. So this is why during our pitch, when we presented uh, what we wanted to do, which was a documentary and an event to promote it, we highlighted the fact that we wanted interviewees that would talk about <clears throat> um, stories from their day-to-day -day life. Nothing necessarily too dramatic in that sense, um, such as big topics of sexual harassment, but what happens in their day-to-day -day life, which can also be very severe and dramatic as well. And this was crucial because we want we wanted at this point a documentary that would show that violation of consent is present all the time. And for students, this is very important because we wanted everyone to be able to recognize themselves in those stories. This is our key, uh, this was our key purpose for this project. Um, the, the project is not over yet for us as the documentary is finished at this point, but our event to promote it will happen on the 23rd of May. And more specifically about our deliverables, uh, the first one is a short documentary. This was very uh, important to th for us to think about a deliverable with a long uh, life a time span for our client. We really wanted something that she could take with her and keep using in her campaign to help her um, with her uh, association. This is why we thought of a documentary. In this documentary, we have five interviewees. Something else that we really wanted to highlight was um, being able to have interviewees from different backgrounds to have different cultural perspectives and have this um, feeling that everyone is included because inclusion is something very important for our clients. So we have um, for four to five actually nationalities represented. We have uh, Dutch nationality, we have Arabic and German, Swedish and Aruban with um, interviewees speaking Pepimiento. So we had to go through uh, the recording process um, and well, selection of participant first and then the recording process and then the translation that we realized was um, challenging but uh, very interesting and um, we gained a lot of knowledge about this. So with this documentary, um, every interviewee answer three questions, what is consent to them, to highlight the fact that everyone has a different definition of consent at the end, um, a story to share that they feel comfortable with, and then a last question, what they would like to see change in society. So the, the idea was to define the topic, share an example of how they live through that topic in their lives, and what they would like to see actually change and society not to have to go through this. And the result um, is, as wanted, very diverse and very inclusive. Um, so the, the, the client will be able to use it for her campaigns and even uh, make shorter version if she wants to put it in uh, social media, for example. 
And the last part for us is going to happen on 23rd of May, uh, which is the event. It takes place in the C building. We decided to have the event take place in the C building because we thought it was most suitable. Most students from GPCM are willing to attend an event also when it takes place in another building, and we thought that students from other courses might not be as likely to go to a different building to attend an event. Lots of students are already in the C building because there's a big cafeteria there where they go for lunch, so the event takes place next to the cafeteria. This was approved by the event management. For promotion, we decided to hand out flyers and have our flyers displayed on the screens that are distributed on campus. We got in contact with the different people who take care of putting the flyers on those screens. We also made use of social media. We spread the flyers or pictures of the flyers on Instagram as well as on WhatsApp. We found that we usually find out about events through group chats on WhatsApp, so that's why we wanted to promote our event, our event through this as well. During our event, we will show our the documentary that we've created and after we will talk to the students about what they've seen in the documentary, they can ask questions if they like. We decided to have our event together with the other team and they will have their mannequin um, exposition at the event. This entire project has been a great learning experience for each different team member. And I want to dive a little deeper into the most important lessons that we have learned throughout working on this project. One of the most important lessons we've learned, I think, is about expectation management. Every team member has different expectations. And talking about those expectations and trying to manage them and find common ground in that and laying down some ground rules can really help to make the process develop more efficiently and smoothly. The expectations can be about time management, about how you, if you come prepared to a meeting or unprepared, what does being on time mean? Does it mean being five minutes late or on the dot? Those things all differ from person to person and talking about those expectations at the very start of the project and making sure that you're all on the same page can really help take away a bit of that confusion and just have things run more smoothly. Another thing that we've learned is about dividing responsibilities. I think this has been a really great learning experience for us. At first, we really focused on dividing different tasks, and this could be tasks, smaller tasks within the project, but then we started to focus more on dividing responsibilities, like the responsibility for promotion, the responsibility for the filming, the responsibility for, for finding interviewees, and those big responsibilities, it doesn't mean that you actually have to complete all of the work for it, but it just means that you're responsible for making sure that the work is completed by whoever is on the team. And giving this responsibility to one specific person makes it easier for the task to actually be completed because there's a greater sense of responsibility. And if something is not completed, then it is clear who to address, who to talk to, to resolve this problem. Another great thing we've learned is about communication, specifically online communication. I think we've learned that it is pretty hard to cut to the chase and make decisions when you are talking online via WhatsApp or Teams. This, I think, is having standardized meetings and standardized ways of sending text messages within a WhatsApp group can really help um, communication run more smoothly. Kind of standardizing those meetings and WhatsApp messages can be done by always assigning a person to keep everyone on track during a Teams meeting um, and maybe using red exclamation points to sh indicate that a message is important and has to be responded to rapidly. Things like that can really make Teams meetings or WhatsApp group messages more structured and just make it easier for people to really stay on track and for everything to be clear. Uh, yeah, so that's something that we've learned and impl it wasn't always easy to stay on top of our game, especially with everyone coming from such a different background and approaching things very differently, sometimes making it hard for us to perform very well as a team. We found that communication is really the answer to this problem and openly communicating about our struggles and our tendencies was 
really important for us to find a way that works for our team spe specifically. We found that there is no one size fits all and that looking at each individual is really important for creating a system that works for the team. Our team performance was also greatly improved by celebrating our wins and really focusing on the things that we were proud of. To really improve team performance, I would focus on making sure that the schedule of the project matches with the schedule of the subjects that we have throughout the year. Usually at the end of the semester, there is two weeks in which we have a lot of deadlines, making sure that the Gantt chart of the team, the, the project kind of matches up with the semester schedule to make sure that the deadlines aren't at the same time that we're supposed to get a lot of work done for our project would be very helpful to make sure the team performance is at its best. Sometimes it can be a bit demotivating if it feels like it's not really possible to get work done and getting behind on your planning is demotivating. So that way I would improve team performance. Also from the very start, focusing on discussing people's backgrounds, getting to know each other better would be something that we would all like to focus on next time to improve our team performance. So regarding stakeholders and the communication with the stakeholders and within the team, uh, I would first uh, describe the main stakeholders, which were the client Suzanne Vink, the interviewees um, that will be shown in the documentary, Windesheim as target audience, so the students of Windesheim, and the lecturer of PMS, Rick Berbe. Um, the communication with the client was based on a bi-weekly meeting, especially in the second semester. So um, that meeting, uh, the 30 minutes uh, meeting was mostly for updating her uh, on the process, on the progress and for decision making. Um, the channels we used was Teams, so Microsoft Teams and WhatsApp and emails. Uh, the communication with uh, Rick, the other stakeholder, was mostly during classes, um, just checkups and updates um, towards the end of every class. Um, the communication within the team was via WhatsApp and uh, the files uh, were uploaded on Teams. Our consent project also supports um, SDG number four and SDG number five. So SDG number four is quality education and number five is gender equality. And I think by raising awareness, we not only raise awareness in general through, um, through that documentary, but also we increase the quality of our education on campus and we also enhance the gender equality. Um, lastly, and to end our project report, we would like to show a very quick teaser of our documentary. Enjoy! Mijn naam is Gijan de Mengst, ik ben 51 jaar, ik woon in Zwolle.